Hello everyone and welcome back to X-Plane 12 where I'm going to test out a few more planes that were for X-Plane 11 to see if they work out in the sim. And this has been a fraught process. One reason I haven't posted many X-Plane 12 videos is because I had tried some planes in X-Plane 12 that were for X-Plane 11 and then suddenly they decided to basically wreck X-Plane 12. Uh, the game wouldn't start even after I removed all mods. The game wouldn't start and I ultimately had to reinstall the whole thing. So that wasn't great uh, and soured my experience a little bit. So I paused a little bit on this attempt to get other planes in, but uh, this time I have at least made sure that these planes are not going to kill the program before recording this video. So yeah, but I don't know which of those mods actually was at fault, so I can't say, but yeah. Uh, I normally bring them in in a small batch together, uh, to see them all at the same time. Now, to review, uh, the Flight Factor 757 works. They have updated it. It is a special X-Plane 12 version that you can get. So that is uh, what we want there. Uh, the FJ Sim uh, 727, the Fly J Sim 727, does not exactly work. Uh, Ryuku, in the comments to my previous video on the testing of things in the X-Plane 12 beta, remember this is a beta version. There's a beta version of X-Plane 12, that's why things are a little bit iffy. Uh, but the 727 uh, has issues with the trim, and basically you can't fly it safely, but Ryuku suggested that certain edits to the ACF file, the aircraft file, uh, would fix it somewhat, but I don't know exactly. So, yeah, but there's definitely no official patch for it. As far as vSky Labs goes, practically everything they, they have works. So I've got the C-47 here, and I've got the Contraventus there, and I've got a few other things as well. And so those are things I have tested in previous videos, and we are going to start with other things. And I'm going to start with the Carinado Cheyenne, which is the PA-31T. And this is a very nice plane. I like it a lot. I, I just like the plane itself, first of all, and I, I thought that the implementation was good. We'll start off at uh, SFO and just see how it works. Okay, we are in the cockpit of the Cheyenne. It is loud, but maybe we can fix that with the volume here. Um, yes, we can. So, well, the volume thing works. We have a beeping. Uh, so, there's also that. I don't... I think I can just master caution, click that, and yes, the beeping is off. Okay, so, it looks okay. Um, there's a little bit of a shininess on the dials that I'm not entirely sure of, but... Um, let's see, panel lights, because it's a little bit dark, actually. Uh, did that do, hold on, we need to get a view where I can manipulate that and see. Uh, it's very mild. It's like the lights aren't very strong or anything, but it does do something. I'll just tune those up to help visibility. Okay, the sound is good. Obviously the model is good, I didn't expect anything else. It loads. I really like the look of the plane, mainly. So, I like flying it around because it's such a sleek plane. It's a wonderful plane just for the looks. Okay, so I also have XP Realistic. That does work. The X-Plane 11 version works. And so you can hear the ground sounds. Those are probably XP Realistic. And we're off. I hear a gear sound. Uh, I don't hear a gear retract. Now that's a very common sort of issue. I'm pretty sure I had the sound of it retracting. Just It's just the animation that doesn't work. And I don't know. Uh, the word is that Carinado isn't particularly engaged with X-Plane 12. So that would be a bit sad. If the only thing necessary to fix this plane was fixing the landing gear and we don't get that. It does seem that way though. Performance wise it seems to be about right right now. I'll check some of the other animations. Let me slow down and check the flaps. The 
the control surfaces work. Animations as well, though they're very subtle. But that's alright. Possibly not wrong. Okay, flaps. Flap animation works. So it really is just the landing gear. And let me just... Oh. We're leaning. Um, I don't know why we're leaning so much. <laughs> uh, I, w I don't know if there's some other problem here. It's still tending to the right. I don't know. Now the aileron trim doesn't seem sensitive. It's like... It's, it's sort of like the failure where if the flaps broke off, so maybe a flap broke off, but it usually tells you. I do remember flaps breaking off in x 11, and that was sort of the feel. And, yeah, the plane tends to veer off to the left and right uncontrollably. And maybe there's something I'm missing there. Let me just restart and not do the flap extension and see if that helps. Okay, uh, there's a mild tendency to the left, but I think it was really the flaps breaking off and we just didn't get a notification that the flap had broken off and that was probably because of overspeed. I lowered it at too high a speed because I was testing it from outside and I didn't have the in cockpit view to know what the speed was. So we'll count that veering as actually a feature, not a bug. <laughs> that was how it was supposed to be. So okay, yeah, it really is just the landing gear animation and it would be a shame if we don't get a fix for that. I don't know, uh, maybe I'll poke around in plane maker to try and fix these things, but oh, there's an aircraft carrier. Um, we'll see. Yeah, let's try something else. It is nice how we can... I should make a video on the nice things about X-Plane 12 or X-Plane 11 for that matter. And one of them is how quickly we can change our flight and also our livery. Uh, we could do that immediately. Uh, but let's see. I had added the FA-18, that's not for sale anymore, that's the Kolimata FA-18. Uh, since it's not for sale anymore, I'll just, well, I'll just test it, I'll test it. It's always good to test things. Other people might have it. Okay, we have the XP realistic window, I'll just leave the stuff the way it is. Uh, so on the inside it looks the way it did in X-Plane 11, it's a little bit dim, but uh, I think maybe... No, the brightness there is all the way up. Anyway, I'm not going to fill around with that right now. It probably is a way to... Well, there's a brightness knob there. That doesn't work right now. Okay. Alright, exterior view. We are clean. It looks good. Alright. So, here we go. Nice sound. That, again, extra realistic. Okay, liftoff speed is nominal. Landing gear retracts. And before we get too fast, I'll... Okay. Flaps are good. Control surfaces are good. I probably need to just disengage the head leaning for XP realistic, uh, or reduce that. But yes, it seems to fly fine. And let's just go higher up and break the sound barrier and all that business. Though I expect the dynamics are probably even better in x 12 than x 11. It feels fine. Just a reminder, as far as the scenery is concerned, I have Fork Boys US Ortho photos. Those, again, from x 11, they work just fine as well. Same method to use additional scenery as in x 11. And Mach 1. At fairly low altitude, maybe we should have waited a bit. After burner effects are fine. 
Acceleration is basically what I would expect it to be. Performance, as far as jet fighters are concerned, is still much more realistic in X-Plane than in Flight Sim. <laughs> of course, DCS World is another thing, but uh, this is probably the better place. Which is why I'm sad that they didn't port over, even if it's not very high quality, the SR-71 and the X-15 and some of the other planes we had in X-Plane 11. That was also another disappointment, you know. The high performance planes are probably the more interesting things. There's no point for X-Plane to compete with Flight Sim on general aviation. Uh, it's really these high performance planes where it shines. And, you know, it's called X-Plane, so it should be experimental or, you know, interesting sort of planes. And I was tempted to get the, the F-19 Stealth Fighter that V-Sky Labs had released. I'm thinking about that, but, you know, weird planes is what it's all about, and so I hope that they eventually bring in the SR-71 X-15 and stuff like that, space shuttle, because that's probably where this sim can really shine. Airliner front, maybe, because airliner front doesn't the, you know, ground scenery, the very detailed scenery that Flight Sim offers is no longer very useful at airliner heights. And with the Orpho scenery that is available, uh, X-Plane 11 does just fine if you're at a high altitude. Although, I mean, it's not bad. I like the cars and everything. There's a lot to like about the low altitude flying. It's just a matter of the competition is steep. The competition as far as uh, experimental and high performance planes, though, uh, it's not very steep from flight sim. <laughs> it's, uh, they, they don't fly exactly right, and they fly a lot better here. Okay, well, this is probably more sensible. Uh, the plane is not going over speed. It's not going faster than it ought to. So let's try something else here. I think the F-18 works. How about the Harrier? This is the X-Trident Harrier. Okay, so here is the Harrier. I hear a warning. It's got a lot of warnings. We want to have the nozzle control on something. Oh, I've got it on thrust vector. Let me. Well, the nozzle does not seem to be responding to that. So maybe that doesn't work very well. Well, let's try it in flight. Let me look outside. Well, nothing abnormal around here. Oh no, I think it reset the nozzle. Oh, now it's responding. Okay. It feels a little bit lighter on the skids, or this, the wheels, I mean. It's not just going straight up. Can we short takeoff? I've got the nozzle at 60 degrees. On the outside, it definitely has nozzles down. What the heck is that? Negative 27,360 up there on the HUD. Can I take off right now? Okay, well, we can take off at 89 knots, so I'll, that's a short takeoff in my book. So it's sort of working. We might be too heavy or something for vertical takeoff, so that's possible. Landing here. Landing gear is fine. Flaps is fine. Now uh, let me try and see to what extent we can hover. Uh, the altitude tape I don't think is working. But I mean, we can see the our rate. It's just the altitude seems to be weird. All right, 80 knots, 70 knots. Okay, but now we're going down. It can't really hover right now. It might need to be tuned a bit, or we might just be too heavy. Oh, I think I don't have enough altitude. Ooh, that's oddly satisfying, though. It's surely nice not to get a black screen. Oh.
Um, we have turned into a submarine, though. We we are we're sort of a submarine, and I don't know what to do about it. But yes, it's nice not to get a black screen, and that allows us to have this happen. Okay. Anyway, so the Harrier sort of works. Oh no, we had full fuel. Okay, then it's fine. Uh, then it's probably right. It wouldn't be able to hover with this much fuel. Uh, let's put less fuel in and see if it can hover. Let's just really underdo it. Just enough so that we can test that. Okay, yeah, we're going up. Or, okay, we were almost going up. We're definitely, like, helicoptering here. Uh-oh. Uh, maybe we should have more forward speed. <laughs> okay, well, alright, we're up. Let's see. I'm at full throttle. And probably we would be using up that water for the cooling. Like this. Okay, we're at 25, 20 knots, and we're not going to go up, though. Uh, it's not bad, though. Yeah, no, it pretty much hovers like this. Yeah, a uh, large-scale functionality with the Harrier seems fine. It's just little things. Oh god. Oh god. Okay, let's not kill ourselves this time. Okay, we have transitioned from a hover or near hover into regular flight. Yay. Okay, so that's the Harrier by X Trident. Let's try something else. Skunk Crafts at P51. Now, people had said that this works, but I'll be the judge of that. I went to the forums. I selected planes that people suggested might work, but we were going to verify. Okay, Skunk Crafts P51. Uh, looking good with the Glamorous Glen livery, Chuck Yeager's livery. Good sound. Alright, here we go. And strong tendency to the left, as one would expect. Up we go. Some of that's XP realistic doing things. Okay, we are up. Outside, the gear is up. Performance seems fine. Nothing too weird right now. Yeah, I don't see anything obviously the problem right now. Let's take a look at how the control surfaces do their thing. Yep. Okay, and it has a nice wobble, as a plane should when you do that with it. It's not stiff like the ones that came with the Reno Air Race stuff in Flight Sim. It feels like a proper plane, not a fly-by-wire thing. I don't see any obvious problems. Definitely an enjoyable Warbird. And let's see, anything else I haven't tested? Nope, I think that's it for this video. So, as we take a look at the traffic, which is one of my favorite features these days. Oh, we've got trains too, I keep forgetting. The trains are wonderful, I like trains in Sims. 
But yeah, the car persistence is really great. Because that is something Flight Sim is very distractingly lacking in. The fact that the vehicles disappear on you at short distances. I mean, it's not perfect or anything. But... Oh, we got... No, that was just a turn. Okay, that's just, I can think of that. So things are looking nice here. There are little bits here and there that break immersion, but everything is going to have that. And I'll continue to risk my install to test planes, but probably only after I get some tip that something might be working. I really, really though, just want the stock SR-71, X-15, and Space Shuttle. But maybe that's asking for too much, we'll see. Um, I like high performance planes, what can I say? So anyway, as I cruise along here, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I will see you next time.